Hi there and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Jeffrey Nsofo, the founder of the Being the Best of You platform. And uh, today on the Power to Dream series, we have the privilege of having a remarkable guest whose life in business has been so remarkable that you would be wowed by her story. It's a story that captures the journey of faith, failures, and also the victories of all that she has experienced all throughout her business life. She's a lady who transitioned from the corporate world of working in a multinational company to going ahead to starting her own company where she manufactures and distributes um, coconut oil all across the globe. And so today, um, perhaps this is your first time being on our YouTube channel. Can I please ask that you please click on the link below to subscribe or hit the subscribe button so at least you're notified every time um, a new episode of the Power to Dream series or any of the podcasting um, topics come into play. But again, I guarantee you that you're in to listen to an interview of a lifetime. Until then, enjoy this episode and keep being the best of you. <music> And you're welcome here tonight. Um, so my name is Jeffrey. And so uh, tonight, uh, just to give some form of brief introduction as to who our guest is tonight, okay? Um, her name is um, Yinka Oshifeso. Um, I happen to know her through my wife because um, sometimes when I'll hear her on, on the phone, I will hear things like Orik is spicy, you know, and things like that. And I'm wondering, who is this person? So eventually, um, I got looking into her and her story is just remarkable. Her story is just remarkable. And so uh, just to give an introduction, she is the founder of a global brand called Orik Lewa Organics. So perhaps you may have seen her product um, either in the stores or you may have seen it with someone well. The person behind that brand is here with us tonight. And so it's a brand that is basically focused on distributing cold pressed organic coconut oils. I hope I got that right. You know, and her story is remarkable. And I say it's remarkable because many times we hear people who perhaps they started off doing what they are doing today on the base of maybe they got support or they got a big loan and that's how they got it. But this, this story started simply from humble beginnings you know humble beginnings it doesn't get any humbler than you starting from the confines of your kitchen you know and today uh, today god be god be glorified um the brand is present in 29 states in nigeria um it's all across the globe in places like canada the united kingdom the united states and the reality of it is that she's hoping that this would be in every nook and cranny of the earth. And the reason behind it is many times you, was, I mean, if you hear, I don't want to take the story from my mouth anyways, but you will understand how she came up with um, going into this. It's, it's, that's another remarkable story on its own. But again, in little over six years, just six years, um, this brand is she boasts of 89 distributors and perhaps at the end of this um, webinar series, you're inspired by her story, you believe in her message, you, you, there is a chance of you becoming a distributor. Um, I believe that that, that would be remarkable, you know, but again, um, just glad to have you all here. And I, if you can just, you know, welcome, make welcome our guest. Her name is uh, Miss Yinka. Or she person, um, I'll just um, ask her to unmute herself and just give a proper introduction, and then we'll carry it on from there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jeffrey. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for having me here. I'm very, I'm trying to comfort myself. <laughs> <laughs> this <That's> evening, a... <laughs> I'm so excited. Like if there was anything else to to explain how I feel this evening, you know, it's um, more than being excited, you know. I always love to tell the story because um, it's one that always inspires people and I'm glad I'm the one that um, God has um, used or is still using, you know, to perform or do work this through, you know. 
Good evening again, everybody. So I'll introduce myself. My name is Bianca Oshifeso. Um, I have my first degree was in economics um, with a background in education. Um, I started off teaching. I actually started off being what you would call um, a nanny, you know, because I I had to um, after okay, well after university before just that period where you'd wait for um, to serve the uh, in Nigeria. I'm, I'm a Nigerian um, to serve in Nigeria. Um, I needed to do something, you know, and so I worked with um, a family and then I was babysitting the children, you know, that I did for a while. And then I went to serve. I served in a bank. I came out um, after serving in the bank. I worked in another bank. And then I worked in an hotel as um, the account manager there. And then I moved to um, a multinational where I finally resigned from. So in the, at the multinational, I, um, of course, after what I was working, I um, furthered my education by having master's program. I, um, and I also did some professional exams, you know, so I'm chartered administrator uh, and what else. And then I did some other small things which were not even in line <laughs> with my, my, my course, you know. Um, so I worked in this multinational, um, grew up in the ranks from an account manager. I became the treasury manager, became the credit controller for the group. And it looked like everything was doing, going well, you know, um, it was beautiful. Yes, the, all the pecs of the job was there, you know, that particular multinational just knew how to make your head swell with a very large office. You know, you had, um, I had at some point, like I was telling you, um, my car being changed every six months. I had a driver, you know, there were so many perks to it. But then my salary wasn't anything to take home. In fact, it did not take me home most of the time. <laughs> I did not go home with me most of the time. You know, um, I was a management staff. So, I mean, everybody just used to feel that, oh, she had a lot of money, you know, but... It was, I wasn't feeling it, you know, my young, I had younger ones. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to stop there. You're supposed to ask questions. <laughs> you can carry on, um, but there's a part that I wanted to ask you just, just, just before you even go deeper into that, you know, um, okay. and because I know here, you, you know, you mentioned earlier on that, you know, you were a teacher from a teacher at some point you were a nanny you went into hotel management and then eventually went into the corporate line where you became the group um credit control and, and all that stuff and i just wanted to just um first of all i commend you mainly because i i i wouldn't be surprised in the as you carry on sharing your story that i want to believe there were tiny bits of experiences that mm. all added up into what you're doing today. Because, I mean, your story reminds me of Joseph, you know, um, for many of us who perhaps you're not a Christian or perhaps you're watching this on my YouTube channel and you're not a Christian, but I'll just give a background story to that. You know, Joseph was a guy who was a, a loving child, you know, a, a, a parent's favorite. However, he was taken into slavery, into an unknown land by his siblings. However, the skills he learned while he was at the lower echelons of life, if that makes sense, were all what contributed to forming him becoming a prime minister 17 years or 13 years down the line. Because I recall he was 17 when he went into slavery, 13 years in, in slavery. And in his 30th year, he became the prime minister. So, um, I mean, I think it's, it's, you must really be well experienced for, or, or rather perhaps I would say that that was God's way of just preparing you for what you'll be doing today. Absolutely. You're correct. Because whilst I was a nanny, I, um, I learned how to 
be submissive to other people, you know, be able to manage um, the resources of other people. My parents were not poor, are still not poor. My father is late, but my mom is comfortable, you know. I just grew up, um, my parents taught us to be very responsible. I started um, doing business when I was in the university. So my mom used to sell gold and I was selling for her, but then I had a problem with asking people for my money. <laughs> so I went, that business went down, you know. Um, little little wonder you, you became a credit controller. <laughs> You know, so, um, and then I, I, I think I, I tried to also do the same um, bread, toast bread, toasted bread in school, in the university then, but it didn't last long because I was missing classes, you know, so I had to drop, I don't, I don't think I, it lasted for more than a month, you know, and then while I was also um, in the, in the um, multinational company that I eventually, you know, resigned from. I was also, I started off with a business, a small shops business, fingers to mouth. And it was doing absolutely very well. Whilst, even whilst I was doing business, um, we had very big corporates like Access Bank. We did the, the, the end of the year party at some, at some point, you know, we're doing weddings and all of that, you know, but um, the, the staff members were not consistent. They were stealing from you. It was difficult to pe have people stay around where the kitchen was and all of that, you know. So that, you know, didn't do well also. In fact, it was when I, I tried to do it with Oracle Organics and I had to drop it because, of course, I'll tell you why was as I go on. So, yes, I learned a lot of um, things, different things, you know. Of course, in business, um, in, in the banking sector, I learned how to that it was important for me to have a bank account that was separate for me and one for the organization very early on, you know. And then when I got into the hospitality industry, you know, <laughs> there I learned customer service. Now, um, if you check my, if you send a message to our page on Instagram and somebody responds to you, trust me, I'm the one who res would respond. If you, if you send a message to us on WhatsApp, I will be the one to respond. You know, um, I've gone to different, I've gone to different, um, I've been on different platform business classes where they will say, oh, no, you should have a, you should have a department that handles that, you should have, you know, a group. Of, but I know personally that that was my major strength, you know, and I was not going to outsource that part to any any anybody you know and this has helped even in expanding our customer base and our distributorship base you know so um so th those are things that and then of course i learned to be very um to be very detailed about style about quality at Proto Hotel, which was the hotel that I worked um, at, you know, because they were very particular with those kind of things. And, you know, so when today, when the staff were packaging the coconut oil, placed the label just 20 degrees away from the line. <laughs> and I'm only the one that can capture and see and notice one, one that has just been, you know, the one that I'm like, but is it not to pull a bell, you know? <laughs> Madam, auntie, is it not just to pull a bell? But then I'm, I'm able to see those things, you know, I'm very particular. And uh, um, I, I've also been, I had a stint also with decorating, you know? So I, when I was in the university also, I was decorating for fellowships for free of charge, hmm. you know? Even um, if the um, class phone was doing something, they would call me if, um, um, Redeem Christian Fellowship was doing something, even though it wasn't my personal fellowship, I'll would, I would be called to help them decorate. You know, even at some point, I thought I was going to be a decorator or an event person, but then I just had this thing with my hands to be able to create something or create something beautiful, you know, so that's it. Amazing, amazing. Uh, um, and, and I can't introduce myself without talking about my husband, of course, so 
I, I, I was opportuned and very blessed to marry my friend. We went to secondary school together, even though we're in different secondary schools or so sister secondary schools. And then at some point we used to do debates and then come from one school to the other. So I saw him early, but then we went to university together also, but we're not dating then anyway. But when then we went to- It was like so a brother was, to you at the time. Yes, we were brother and sister. <laughs> <laughs> funny enough, funny enough, his, his school mother in secondary school was my best friend. Oh, wow. So I heard this thing. Now, that, that school mother is older than me, you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we, we had this, I had this thing too. I was, at some point in my life, moving with people who were a lot older than I was, you know, um, I think it also impacted in my wisdom and the thinking and exposure and exposure also. Yes. So, and then I'm blessed with three children. So that's my background. Amazing. 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 So can I ask you a question? Cause I mean, if someone looks at what you're doing today with the retinue of experiences you've had in the past, they're almost like at two extremes. Um, mainly because, uh, to be honest, right, first and foremost, I want to say you make coconut oil look um, luxury. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, it's it's almost like someone saying, oh, I sell palm oil for a living. Um, palm oil can be messy. But again, so you realize that, you know, it's, again, it's all about brand perception, isn't it? And, yeah. and I think you've done remarkably well at that. And I say that because, you know, when someone looks at your branding, for example, now I will share on the screen again, um, although it's Orikelewa, quite all right, but even how it's even the positioning, the, the background, everything about it just looks top notch. And, and I want to believe that all those things were like your experience from Protea Hotel and all that, all this kind of stuff. So again, my question would be, how were you able to transition from banking and um, working as a group credit controller to doing something that has a messy process but has a beautiful ending, if that makes sense. Yes. I wanna, I, I wanna be, I believe that the process of bringing out coconut oil is not the most seamless. I believe it's a messy process, isn't it? It is absolutely messy, vigorous, very, it's not just the coolest, you know, to chest, like we say around here, thing to do, <laughs> you know. So, yes. Okay, so I'll go back to the multinational where I was working. So I was working there. At some point, of course, I knew that I needed to move out of that industry or that organization. I'd spent, like, at the time, like, 11 years or 12 years, and I was thinking it's time for me to move. Um but then I was scared. I was scared because, see, I had a car. I had at least more salary coming in every month. It would help, you know, augment whatever it was that my husband was earning. It would help with some things, as no matter how little it was and all of that, you know. So I was scared. Um, but God was very, and so I'm going to be mentioning God a lot. <laughs> I'm a woman of faith, you know. So, um, but God was very helpful to me in that at, at very quickly, I was able to overcome that fear. You know, um, there was there's this um, tradition that I do every year during my birthday, my birthday week. So in 2016, okay, in 2016, I was praying at the birthday week. Um, and usually I would pray like, oh God, what am I supposed to be doing this new year? You know, align me and my thoughts. What am I supposed to be doing? Blah, 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 and all of that. And the scripture that came to me was the story of the woman who um, was who had to borrow bowls of or jars. Um, oil. Yes, for oil. You know, that was what came to me, you know. But it didn't make any sense, you know. And then... Um, I used to attend this fellowship. I still attend that fellowship, you know, and the set woman who I've never met, who I don't know, even up till now, 
you know, just gave a word of knowledge, called my name without my son name though, called my name and said, oh, Rinka, God has given you oil, you know. And as a Nigerian that I was, I was thinking, okay, so this must be that ah, God yeah, wants God. me to move from this multinational to Shell or Chevron or Mobile or, you know, and all of that. My brother, I ran with that thought. The next day, you know, <laughs> I dusted my, my um, resume and gave it to every person that I knew in those four um, oil companies, you know, till tomorrow, one response I've not gotten from those places, you know, but I was thinking, honestly, I was too sure that God wanted me to work in an oil industry because I felt that I, I was, I was, um, I was, I had what it, it would take. I was qualified. I was good on my job. My, the, the, the MD, even those in France were always, you know, recommending me for different things. I felt that even if I needed a recommendation, this organization would back me up to an oil organization and all of that, servicing company, but it didn't happen. Two, two days or so after that settlement had said that word, my youngest sister called me, who at the time was earning a lot more than I was, maybe earning like three times my salary. Now, prior to this time, what gave me the, what made me more uncomfortable was the fact that two and uh, three um, new people came into this organization that I was working in. And I was mandated to um, teach them, to train them and make them ease into the organization, you know. So um, they were coming from another organization and all of that. It is training, working, blah, 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 and all of that until, because I was privy to <laughs> finance information, I saw the salary of these people. And these people were earning more than eight times my salary, and we were on the same level. Man, you must be kidding me. I was like, so these people can pay these people this money. Ah, I was like, my life. I have so changed myself. I have this one. I felt terrible. I almost fell into depression. I felt super bad. Like, what? And we just had a meeting recently and they were still saying, oh, Yinka, you're so good. Yeah, no, 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 no. And, and you were not giving me no salary increase, nothing. You were just increasing my titles and all of that. If you saw, if you see my, um, my um, call card, my business card, if you see the title that I had, they were like three. <laughs> <laughs> group, this group, that group and all of that, you know, but the money in the account wasn't showing it. And I was, I was bitter. No, I was angry, you know, and I had to go back to God. I was like, ah, now is the time to move. But then God, what am I supposed to be doing? So it was at that time I was praying. So he, he considered, he, he just matched properly um, the right time and all of that. Um, and like two or three days after the set woman had talked about oil, um, that had been um, giving oil, you know, my youngest sister called me. And then she was like, ah, ah that's sister Inka. She just got into this group on WhatsApp that they are into health issues, you know, and they are into fitness and all of that. That um, and that um, oh yes, they 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 and it wasn't their fault. Yes, they negotiated before they came in, and probably the, the salary scale at that place was a, a lot higher than what this organization. I mean, of course, I understood that later, but it, it, it we just was something that aided me to also get uncomfortable, you know? So it was it was even good that I could not understand it immediately. <laughs> you understand what I mean? You know, so um, I, um, so she called me and said that, oh, that uh, she knows that I'm very good with my hands. That is it possible that I, I produce coconut oil because they will need coconut oil, you know? And then I'll just put it into bottle, nothing, um, um, fancy or she will now sell for sell on my behalf and then she will give me the money and all of that and I was like ah. so after that call I dropped the call and I just started to cry like I was crying crying I was like ah, ah, that can my sister my own blood sister is it because she's any more than me now thinks that as in coconut oil in Yoruba 
in Yoruba, they call it Adiagbo. That was the name that was coming to my head. That me, Adiagbo, with all my qualification, with all my whatever. And just as I was almost saying like the third sentence, I could hear the Holy Spirit remind me of the woman that had to go and borrow jars because she had oil coming in. And then what the settlement said about oil, I just cleaned my face, went online, checked about coconut oil, and then just started to check about the benefits of coconut oil. Now, what I did not tell you initially was that at this time, I've been battling with tonsillitis since I was a child, since like um, 11 years, you know, and tonsillitis is um, for, for the way to explain it, uh, look, um, with, without, I mean, I'm not a doctor, is like severe throat um, pain or, you know, and all of that, where the tonsils in your mouth would inflame. Sometimes it would even have pus. That was how bad it was for me. Sometimes it would, it would be the two sides. It was really, it's every month at some point I was having it, you know, and I went, of course, my parents took me to different um, ENT doctors, surgeons, the best that they could afford at the time. And I remember that we went to a particular surgeon and he told my parents that, oh, that this girl would need to undergo a surgery and that, that that's the only thing that can help because the, the frequent tonsillitis episode that she has had has punctured all her tonsils. And so he's exposing her to um, bacteria and all of that. And that's why she's having it so often. And so they agreed. And we went to um, Lagos State University Teaching Hospital to book um, um, the surgery. The surgery was going to be done every Monday, only on Mondays. And <laughs> we tried to do the surgery three times. It could not be done. Why? One, because the doctors were on strike. Water was not available at the theater. The blood that my father had donated had been used by another person. And so by the third time, my mother called me aside, even as, as a child that I was, I must have been like 12 or 13 at the time, and said, Yinka, God does not show you that he loves you more than this. And he does not try to es take you away to escape death more than this. That you've tr we've tried to do this three times. In those three times, I saw somebody die, even as a child, beside me. Because nothing, you, you, you can't have this um, surgery done when it is inflamed. So nothing was wrong with me all the times that I was in the hospital for those three weeks. I was just there, just playing games and eating and sleeping and all of that. But there were people who were sick around me, you know. And one child died because I was in the children's ward. Child died beside me. That was traumatic for me for days, you know. And after that, I didn't, I mean, I just left and then I just told myself, okay, so it means that, ah, no ice cream for me. <laughs> no, you, because they do a long list of things I was not supposed to do. I was not supposed to sleep in a room that had AC. I was not exposed to cold. I was this and that and all of that. You know, I just thought, okay, maybe that's, this is how my life is supposed to be. I'll just be wearing cardigan all over the place and all that. You know, so fast forward to this time where I was checking about the coconut oil and the benefits of coconut oil. And then I saw at some point also when I was always attending meetings with my parents, with all these surgeons or doctors, I know that um, there were many times that the, the doctors would say, oh, she needs to, uh, her immunity needs to be boosted, you know that I, you need to boost my immunity, you know. I, I know that word kept ringing in my head. Even as an adult, at this time I was, you know, a full-grown adult. I was even married, you know. So at some point I was in the research and I saw that coconut oil could help to improve or increase your immunity level. Wow. <laughs> that was it for me, Jerry. That's free consultation I, there, guys, people. That was it for me. And then I read how in the Philippines, when they take coconuts, even like eats all of the eats like that and all of that's why their immunity level is so high around there, you know, on the islands and all of that, where there are coconuts surrounding them and everything. That was it for me. I just went to get coconuts, tried to see online, 
what how they produce coconut oil and I started to produce and I was taking it in house, you know, um, I was taking it in my house. And then it was months after, or maybe a month or two, you know, that I realized that I'd not taken this particular antibiotic that I used to use for this month. I also used to have very painful menstrual cycle. So much, it was so painful that I would, the, the pain of the menstrual cycle is the one that would tell me when I would have my menstrual cycle, you know, because I didn't to keep it, I don't have a calendar and, and, you know, and all of that, you know, even up till now, you know, but when I start to have the pain like today now, I know that by next week I would be on. And one way that I knew that this thing was working for me was that I was with my dog uh, with, my, with the driver once and I was going to we we're going to go and shop and I had my list with me and I told him oh we are going to shop right and as I was going to get down from the car I just heard my driver because I always sit in the front with him and I just heard my driver shout auntie auntie AJ, AJ, in, in Yoruba like blood 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 that you sit down you sit down I sat down my whole trouser suit was soaked. I didn't even know I was born. Wow. I did not feel any pain, like nothing. Wow. It was so amazing. I told him, I was just saying, okay, so uh, Abbe, go and buy the, these items, you know. I, we didn't say one word to each other until we got to my house. <laughs> <laughs> it was so embarrassing. You know, that was when I knew that, oh, there must be something to this thing, mm -hmm. you know. And, and of course, I now started to give to family, make and just give to people, you, you use it and all of that and everything. So by the third month or so, I told my husband, ah, I'm resigning from this organization. <laughs> I know where I'm, so what I'm supposed to do now, I know. Where, where I'm supposed to go to, I, know, as in, I will go to work. And after, of course, I would work home. After I work or whilst maybe during break, the next thing I'll be doing is study um, coconut oil, check patterns of how, you know, designs of how the, the bottle will be and all of that was what was always coming to mind. I, I would write this down almost daily, weekly for almost six months before I got the design, how we were going to have that tag on the bottle, you know, our bottles was by the, Holy Spirit inspired totally by him. What we would write on it was inspired by him. How the design, what the colors would be was inspired by him, you know, and... Um, so, if, if you don't mind me asking, so number one, what does Orekelewa mean and why the name Orekelewa? Okay, yes. So, we were looking for um, an Afrocentric name because I wanted something that would um, promote Africa and yet be at the level of international standard, standards, you know, that, I mean, like the types, that, like a brand like Toyota, like a brand, you know, because, and that it would be global. But then um, I wanted something that could, that would talk about the root and, and beauty. So Rekelewa means the beautiful one. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, so what's the Yorubas will, would you say to a medium that or a, a beauty like that you're beautiful, you know, the beautiful one that's a rec what a rec means, like a young, beautiful one, you wow. know. So that's, that's the name. But then initially, I tried to use my own native name, which is, or which is Aduni. It just didn't, it didn't click. <laughs> It wasn't cutting it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first name that came actually, you know, but then my, my husband was actually the one who dropped Orekelewa um, um, for, for us. Initially, we wanted to do Oreke, but then we went with Orekelewa, you know, and then that, that was it. And we we ran with that. Uh, my husband was able to um, encourage me not to um, to 
time at that time, if not, I would have lost some money, you know, for benefits and all of that. Because as managers, management staff, you were supposed to give three months notice or you pay the salary in you, you know. And so I had to wait till September that year and give my three months notice. And then I um, resigned in December and I was able to get my benefits and all of that. But at this time, even though I was resigning, I didn't have so much money to my name. And um, I was, I, I started to, to market, you know, I, I would put stuff on Facebook, which was the platform I started to use at the time. And then one day, um, my husband and I were going to uh, Med Plus Pharmacy, to be precise. We were, we were going to go and buy um, a multivitamins for our children. There's this gummy multivitamins where we only could get from that particular store. And we were going to, we went there together, it was Saturday. And as we were about to enter into the mall where that Med Plus pharmacy was, my husband told me, you're going to talk about your product. And I looked at him and I said in Yoruba that, do you know them there? You know, so and he said, you don't have to. <laughs> so question then, question. Because because from now, I, I can already see an interesting timeline here. So how then did you get your big break then? Because from all I can see now, it's all starting small and stuff. And I mean, you're a global brand now, but how then were you able to break into the market? Because I know, for example, for myself, come from a business background, trying to penetrate a market where perhaps it's... it's, it's um, I would say in the cosmetic industry, it could be quite hard, you know? So how were you able to get your, your big break, so to speak? So, so this was the big break I, I, I'm oh, wow. about to talk about. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. So, so, um, we, I asked him and I said, do you know them there? And I was like, you don't have to know them. You know, you just talk about your products. And of course I was always going around with my products, you know, at least, Two or three samples were always in my bag. I would just talk about it if I was at a party, if I was in church, I would mention to people around and all of that. If they didn't want to buy it, I would still tell them, just take this one and go and try it. They would come back and, you know, but then it was like in bits and pieces. But at this particular day, after my husband had said, oh, we'd want this multivitamins, blah, blah, blah. And then he told me, pharmacy, yes, we have a product we'd like you, we'd like you to see and that, um, um, that we think you should, it should be on your shelf. And the, the guy said, oh, do you have the product here? And I was like, yes. I don't know where the boldness came from. And I was like, yes. I said to take, talk about it. Oh, it's lesson, a guys. Product. Lesson, guys. Always go prepared. Always go prepared. <laughs> well, I, I said to talk about it, you know, all the benefits, what you could use it for, what you can do, and all of that, how it would be good here, yeah, and everything. Blah, blah. And I was like, oh, that's oh, I should hold on. We should hold on. It went behind the counter. You know, they always have this pharmacy corner where they would go yeah. in or their office. And so it went there, went to make a phone call. And then, okay, before he went, he said, oh, that um, he would like to speak with the procurement, the global, the national procurement manager for MedPlus. And he went in and then he came back again. And he was like, ah, Madam, I don't know, will you be available on Monday for an interview? And Jeffrey, me too, I had to now play the part. I was like, <laughs> Monday, let me check my calendar, you know. <laughs> I was like, oh, yes, I'm free, I'm free. You know, and I said, okay, so you would see so, 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 and so person, you know, tell them your, tell half that you're from um, this particular branch, you know, and all that, and that was it. I went with my proposal, I was ready. I went with my proposal, Jeffrey, at that on, I went downstairs, you know, to wait at the lobby, and I was called to come and get my LPU. And by the time I saw the LPU, I was supposed to supply 360 bottles for each of our sizes. Wow. So so wait, hold on now. Prior to this LPO, <laughs> prior to this LPO, what was your 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 manufacturing size? 
So we had only one Lebanese supermarket we were supplying at that time. That's the point. We had only one Lebanese, and then maybe we were supplying them um, 48 bottles altogether of all the wow. sizes. Yes, wow. 48. You know. Then we had 100 ml, 250, 500, one liter. So imagine being able to supply 360 for all of that. Now, unknown to me, May Plus was not only um, ordering for that branch, they were ordering for all the branches in Nigeria. Wow. Wow. That's a good problem to have. Hello. Can you guys still hear me? If you can, just let me know. Okay. Uh, okay, yes. Oh, she's back now. Yeah, yeah, she's back. Yeah. So we lost you at the point where you said that they were supplying, that they were requesting for the national brand. Oh, yes. Okay, so unknown to me, I was asked, this was going to be to be redistributed to all the branches um, of MedPlus across the nation, you know, and so I was wondering how was I going to be able to get money, you know. I started off with 50000 to get my initial coconuts, my bottles and all of that. It was even the same 50000 that I was putting back and all of that. Maybe at that time I must have had maybe like maybe 80000 or something, you know, and I was going to be needing close to um, 800000 to be able to do this. I didn't have it. And so I asked my husband and he was able to give me some money, but it was still not going to be enough. So I asked my younger sister who borrowed me 500,000. And I was able to do that job in December. I supplied them in January and that was the big break. And I started to capitalize on that, on that, um, that, that network. <laughs> I was the word on that um, on that win, you know, and then I was advertising the fact that we were made close and all of that. And then other supermarkets started to call us, you know, some of them would just go there um, by ourselves on my own. I would just go and then show them and they were, you know, and then I'm like, oh, but we were also in made plus you know, and they were like, oh, you're made plus. Okay, bring so, 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 and so, bring this one and all of that and everything. And so, oh, good. Okay. And that's how we. We started off. Now, whilst um, all of this time, I did not have my, I did not have it anymore because I had, because when I was in the multinational and they were giving me that, I gave out my credit card or personal card to somebody. And so I didn't do anything. I was using my everyone's card points would share if I had to go to, to see the, a client and didn't have any place to go to, I would use the car. If not, I'll use the public transport, you know. And when I get close to the place where I'm going to, um, I'll take a cab and then go and see the <laughs> clients, you know. Um, but six months after this break, I was able to buy my own car from the proceeds of, of, of what Orekelewa was doing. Wow. That's how that's how massive we now became. Wow. And at some point, of course, we could not meet up with our demands. And I had to tell God that I needed help. Wow. I didn't I couldn't afford any machine. I was I I and because we had not done business for up to a year, we could not even approach the bank for loan. Wow. Um we could, nobody was giving us grants. There was not, even up to now, I still don't have any, I've not gotten any grant or loan or investment from anybody. All of this has been bootstrapping. And I, um, <laughs> so, it's, sorry. It's, I mean, your, 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 your story has been so remarkable. You know, I wrote down here in my notes and I said, you know, your current comfort is your, is your enemy to the next big breakthrough, you know, because for me, what I just learned from what you just said now was the fact that, you know, 
you could have well been settled in doing what you're doing but you know you were willing to you know explore what was ahead of you because i i mean the truth is you had six cars sorry um your car was renewed every six months and all those things and so it was a pleasure that not many people were, were willing to sacrifice but i think one of the one of my lessons so far in your story is the fact that we must come to terms with the fact that or, or for me personally how i know that god wants me to move to my next level right is that he makes the place where i am very uncomfortable you know because sometimes we can be the enemies to our prayer points if that makes sense you know i recall the story in scriptures you know um jacob it was time for jacob to leave but had laban not mistreated him his, had his uncle not mistreated him perhaps he wouldn't have taken the initiative to make his next move you know yes yeah, okay so, i mean by all means carry on carry on so at some point we i knew that only me could not go i mean for for the vision that was in my head and what i'd written down there was no way i was going to be able to do it and especially because i didn't even have machines i didn't have and at this point i was still it was still being run um in my kitchen and not that <laughs> I don't know whether I should even say this if this is going online. Um, um it will go online. It will go online. It, okay. Yeah. So, okay. so perhaps um, what I can assure you is that um, you know what? Let's not. Let's not. Um, because I, I think perhaps you want to say your trade secret. Is it? No. 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 So what I wanted to say was. The fact that, you know, I was leading prayers this morning and I was saying that um, um, God leads us, you know, to, God leads us to different paths. And sometimes the paths, and because we are being led, like the, the, the scripture says, we are being led um, by the spirit of God. Because we are not, and our, and whilst we are being led, we are not being limited by the law. Hmm. Okay. At this point where we were asked to be engaged by this organization that I mentioned, I'm not going to mention their name anymore. Yeah. You know, we have not gotten our NAVDA. And it's still to go. You know, for many people who don't know what NAVDA approval is, um, is a is a should I say a regulatory agency that ensures that every product that is going to be consumed by customers are approved by them. And so, for instance, you cannot take your product to market, so to speak, on a large scale, if you don't have that NAVDAC number. So we have not gotten it. We got it a year after, a, a year plus. A year plus after was when we got it. And that's how much they trusted the brand. And so today, I mean, I don't play with that particular brand, you know. Um, um, so that, that, that was that. You know, so um, there's this um, prayer work my husband and I usually we, we do on the weekend. And myself and him were going on one, one day. He was ahead of me. And I was, I was talking to God. Honestly, I was whispering to God. I think I was even seeing it under my breath. Like I, I, I wasn't seeing it out. And I told God, I told God, at this point, we need to need um, coconut workers. I need shellers. I need drill, drillers. I need, I need so many all the types of machines that I need, which were running into millions. I said, how am I going to be able to afford this? I said, God, okay. send the part to me. Jeffrey, I kid you not. I doubt if I had swallowed my saliva after I said that. And the call came. I had the phone call. My phone was in my pocket, in the bedroom, in the pocket, um, of pants. And I picked it. I didn't, I, 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 I didn't have that person's number. So it was just showing numbers. 
And the person said, oh, are you Orikilewa Organics? I said, yes. She said, oh, she saw our products and the things that we do online, you know, she just, she, she wanted to introduce our organization to me. She does, um, she sells coconuts and then, you know, she produces coconut oil and all of that, you know, um, that she was thinking that um, she could make coconuts available to me so that I would produce um, and all of that. And then I asked, I said, what kind of coconut oil do you produce? She says, we don't cold press coconut oil. I said, you do coconut oil. And I was looking around me, like maybe somebody was pranking me. <laughs> like I was trying to delay the conversation just so that I would have time to see, oh, somebody hiding behind a tree or something. This person was not around me. And the Holy Spirit was telling me, that's your help. And so that was the person that we were able to partner with and we've partnered with in six years. So what happens? Oriculella Organics does not produce, does not have a machine. We work like Uber. They don't have fleet of cars. Are you kidding me? I was able to, I'm telling you. So we sent our specification to this person. I sent everything by color, by text, by, by all of that. I sent to this person and I said, if I can get the specification, I will go to FIRO. FIRO is another regulatory body who checks the uh, specification of product, you know, that we would use. And if it matches what we want, we would work with you and would be our me. And we did. In fact, it was better than what FIRO requested. Wow. I mean, I'm having goosebumps in my body. Like, like you know, because th th this is Holy Spirit innovation right here. You know? So that, that's what we've been doing. So he has the expertise. A lot of people don't even know this. Many of my distributors don't even know this. So... Do you mind this being online? I don't mind. It's God's glory. I really don't mind. Awesome. Awesome. It's not anything that I, I mean, I doubt if Uber is not also letting people, everybody knows it's open secret. True. They don't have people cars, but they, they do all of that, you know, so I, I really don't know, you know, so that's what we do. So this person produces for us um, and sends to us. So what we do is to package and market. So that's what we do. Wow. Like, like, I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm humbled because, you know, I just in my mind think how many I business. I still don't have a machine. What I have, if you come to our office, you will see a dispenser. You see, no, two dispensers. You will see mixers for the shea butter. Um, that's it. Wow. And you know what? What even humbles me is that. Sorry, Jeffrey, you were yeah. saying 89 people earlier. So somebody joined us yesterday. So we are 90 now. Wow. So we are 90 people. We are in 28 states in Nigeria. We are in four countries. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. Maybe a, distri a distributor is online here. <laughs> or for someone, yeah, who's watch someone who is going to watch this on youtube um would want to reach out to you but you know what marvels me is that you know god is a good god you know he, you know he's 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 a good god and perhaps i've never said this on this platform you know i approach things from an aspect of faith you know i'm a man of faith and i believe i wear my faith in everything that i do but i just ask myself how many people have suffered loss or losses and are suffering losses all because God was never involved? Because uh, could you imagine, right? In my mind, I'm thinking, you were trying to approach this from a, a human perspective. I do business consulting sometimes. And from a consultant's uh, a point of view, I will tell you, okay, fine. Prepare a business plan. How do we raise finance? crowdfunding um you're diluting your shares in your company whereas you didn't have to 
and one of the things about dilution is the fact that the moment you start you begin to lose control so even when you want to put your signature on it and when i mean signature, not what you sign by hand but what makes you 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 are limited because that if the the entirety of the company is not owned by you and so you're limited many people have lost their businesses because they kept on diluting their shares all in the name of trying to raise finance but here you are all because you just said lord help me help me lord help me and here you are you have absolute control as to how you do your things you're not answerable to anybody and yet you're still able to thrive and make progress in all that you're doing i mean it's 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 a remark i told you guys that her story would blow your mind <laughs> And, and and you know don't be surprised i'm saying this here don't be surprised that you'll be invited to business schools to share your story amen <laughs> don't be surprised i'm not joking because the, we are we are coming to a time and age where the wisdom of the world is failing so they are looking for answers outside what we already know mm. And so you realize that the world will be seeking for people like you to say, you know what, how did you do it? Because I mean, it's your, your, your story is, is beyond human comprehension. Do you get what I mean? And so don't be surprised. Lagos Business School will invite you if they could do the same. If, if Harvard could make more Abudu, you know, a case study, why not Reke Lewa? Amen. <laughs> That's the truth. But but I'm sowing these seeds in your mind because as much as you're coming here to bless us, the aim is for you to also live inspired. And if they could be doing it, why not you? Do you get my point? Uh, and so I I mean it's 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 really really amazing. But carry on, carry on, please. The, the floor is yours. So that that has been it. Um we had to we had meetings you know eventually and of course it had to do with trust and of course because of course this was i knew it was the holy spirit that was involved so there wasn't anything there was no need to doubt every move and as god would have his results she's also a christian you know and um, we've had different levels you know, because initially the, the factory was in Nigeria and from the beginning we were bringing in coconut from Ghana to Nigeria, you know, because the coconuts in Ghana are more, um, more regulated for lack of what you I mean, I mean, that's the thing. It's well-regulated production of it and harvest and all of that. You can't, we use only matured coconuts for our production. So um, we found out that for around here, what people do is when they are, when they need money, they just go behind their farm or their houses, um, harvest some coconuts, whether they are matured or not, and mix it with, oh, and then farm forms over it. So it looks like the husk is brown, which is one of the features that you know that feel that coconut is matured, you know, and then they sell it off. But it's with Ghana, it's not been like that. And so when you're buying a trailer load of coconuts, you're sure that what it's you will get coconut. is mature. Not that when you buy a trailer load from around here and then you find that one quarter of it are immature, you know. So it, um, at some point, we also realized that staff um, labor, people in Ghana than in Nigeria. So we had to move factory from Nigeria to Ghana, which is where we are now. Um, she's still the, the one in charge of production. Um, we've been able to get more machines from the Philippines for the peeling, for the, all of that and everything in Ghana. It's better there. Business is, is easier to do there, you know. <laughs> so you know, that's what we do. You know, what is giving me chills, right? Um, for so long, I don't want to say for so long, but for the past two, three days, right? There's something that has been 
so strong on my heart that as a matter of fact i found myself saying it vocally so just to give you an, an instance of what i'm trying to say here in the uk right i noticed something very remarkable um elementary business school will tell us that you know always try to outdo your competition do whatever will try to put them out of business and things like that but however i noticed something very very interesting here in the uk right whenever i see kfc it's almost inevitable i'll see mcdonald's and burger king in the same building or on the same like within an eyesight and the holy spirit began to minister to me with that scenario that as children of god we should go for collaboration and competition and so i never really understood that or, or the significance of it until you just said what you just said now that you know the the lady that you're doing this with she has what she's focusing on you're all playing to your major strengths at the end of the day you know it's a win-win situation you're That's happy so she's happy and everybody you know you know my wife will always tell me the sky is big enough for all the planes to fly it's amazing absolutely. it's 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 really fact, really amazing absolutely i've had situations where you know you know customers can make you if you're if you're not grounded in what you believe um sometimes customers can make you also what's the word i'm looking for allow pride get to you you know so maybe trying to get your 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 buy-in or i don't even know what word it is um they can come and tell you about another brand and say oh that brand ah that's not so good no this one, every time you buy it it smells like this and all of that and i'm like no because there's, there's a science to coconuts hmm. you know that you need to understand coconuts for coconuts we have over 100 species over 100 species of coconuts and so their output will be different hmm. you we are we've been blessed with in orekelewa because um we have farmers who deal with the species that we've been, been using over time and so it also speaks for our consistency hmm. okay over time you know but then some people are are not aware of this information they don't know they probably just saw that oh oh this particular business is doing well let me start selling this product now without having an understanding of the details of this of the business not only about how to sell or how to how to produce but what makes up even production hmm. so i will tell you that i'm not my my strength is not in production but can I can I strategize? Can I market? Can I keep the customers that I have been able to get over time? Those are my strengths, and that's what I focus on. Wow. My market. I know my strength. I have been able to you know um, to 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 do that. And then over time, of course, the Holy Spirit have told me about what I'm what I'm what I'm supposed to do. And I've just been surrounded with so many blessed people. So that when even when I'm in doubt as to ah, maybe I'm not understanding it, like that episode of the oil where I was thinking it was um the oil oil and gas, Shell and Chevron. <laughs> you know, somebody would come within that week to confirm it. Wow. Within that week to confirm it. I think I have somebody on this call, except she's not there anymore. Okay, she's still here. You know, and like almost a year ago, God started to tell us that we were going to start um, a, a gift box for, for new models. Hmm. It would have our products in it, it would have other products also in it. I won't go into details, but it's going to be out very soon. Amazing. You know, whilst I was still contemplating on 
what how I would do it. You know, there were so many angles to it. We were going to have um, declarations for the children, the calendar for every day. We were, it was it was. Now I will say something also. That Rikilewa Organics is actually a ministry. God bless you. Yes. Yeah, so I was telling somebody, telling it, my um, one of our graphics artists. Sorry, I'm digressing again. I said one of our graphics artists. Um, because we're about also to launch the snacks um, line of Oriculera Organic. So we're going wow. to be having the kulikuli, we're going to be having the coconut chips, we're going to be wow. having the, um, the, the flour meal, we're going to be having the cashew nuts. Um, and we already have NAFDAQ certification for those products. Wow. Ah. Already. So it, it's just for us to, to run with it. Now, I was telling him something and he was like, ah, but he calls me Yinkuze. So it's like, ah, Yinkuze, but I always say that every time you know, a ministry is doing something, you will give your products to these people. Is it that they paid for it? Is it that they did this one? They told me about one ministry I was doing something for. And I was like, no. I said, ah, so how are you able to fund it? He said, you know, um, God, that's our partnership. It's our ah. convenience. So, for me, I'll tell you the secret. Let me tell you for the Christians, okay? So what I do is that when I'm about to launch a product, we make sure that those products go out first to a ministry. Hmm. We were going to do the Kuli Kuli, but the first people that got it was a ministry. Wow. You see, for guys, we are learning kingdom business strategies here. Well, the seed, let me tell you now, Jeffrey. So it was a seed. And then they are, they are about to have a program again this year. Yes. And we told at the beginning of this year that we're going to give out two products. One of them I was able to afford. The other one... I still could not find how I was going to be able to get the money to do it. And I still wrote it down. And somebody came out from the blues and said, for that particular product, that she wants to be the one to sponsor that product for this ministry. Wow. I'm still in awe. Like, God, why are you so intentional about my matter? <laughs> But you have been faithful. <laughs> you have been faithful. You that have is been faithful. It's sweet to serve God, honestly, as long as you're, you're listening. And I'm not even saying that I listen every time. Trust me, I'm not even trying to be church here. Because sometimes I feel him. Because the things he ask, he's asking me to do are big. And I'm like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, if I do this. Let one, me catch my like, breath. Let me catch my breath. <laughs> you know, I still did one last month. I did one last month. I did one. Uh -uh. When will I rest now? And he still says, do this. Wow. Do this. So that's one principle that I follow. And has it not helped me to, to be able to now showcase this product more? It has. Real. So God with market is, is, a, is a ministry. You know, and apart from apart from even us doing products for ministries, we have an angle of curricular awareness which we call Angels Without Wings. It's about empowering um, women who are women who have children who are not um, well to do, as it were. You know, um, and we try to empower them. We give them clothing items, children's things, and all of that. The, our first recipient was one lady who sent us a message that um, she was suicidal. In fact, she had attempted to take sniper, which was which, which is a... Poison for pets or, or, or rodents. For rodents. Yeah. So she was going to take it, and um, I think her husband or somebody, her uncle saw her, and then took it from her and then 
you know, and all of that. So, of course, we have things like that that happen and people use it to scam other people. So we had to do um, a bit of investigation and we found out that it was actually true, you know, and at that time we we're able to raise, uh, because she didn't even have money to, she was pregnant at the time, she didn't even have money to, to pay the, school, the hospital bills. She didn't have clothes and items for the child, for the child, you know. Oiklewa was able to the glory of God to help uh, do all of this, you know. And we've been doing it in small portions also to other people. We, we, we trust God that one day we would have our own plantation, which we don't have right now. We would have our own um, hub for women to be able to learn um, to learn skills that would empower them. Because when you empower one woman, you're most empowering a nation, wow. you know, because women are given natural givers, and they'll bless lives and all of that, you know. So I just always say that Orekelewa is more than a business, you know. For a long time, our prices were not increased. You can compare our rates even now with other people. Some business brands, some coconut oil brands who have come to me the DM on Instagram have abused me thoroughly that um, all I'm trying to do is to spoil the market by making the rates very low and all of that and everything, you know, they will see how far I can go with this. Hmm. Uh, in two years or so, I think this is... Okay, so we increased the rates last year, sometime last year, and then we increased it this year in six weeks because of the market factors. Yeah, 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 cost of production obviously has gone up, you know, exchange yeah, rate and yeah. likes. But then it is still not comparable with what other brands are, 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 are charging for their products, you know, and um, we, we, we've just had a lot of goodwill from come from our customers, a lot of loyalty. You know, people go to supermarkets, they see our product and they are genuinely excited for us. Like it's theirs. Like you see somebody would be at a store and say, oh, I'm at this, so, 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 so. I'm in my village. I saw Urikelewa in my village in Kogi State. Yinka, how are you doing this? <laughs> she will take a to me like she's so excited and all of that i have loads of those kind of issues you know and it just makes me smile and you know laugh you know and that's how far god has got us no i mean like i'm 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 beyond blessed i am beyond blessed i am beyond blessed you know your story your story is one that Again, I say it, you know, um, you know, I'm saying it by the spirit of God that mm -hmm. you will be a case study for the world to learn. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, 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 it's remarkable. This is what inspiration is all about, people, you know, like, and, and I mean, I mean I'll just leave it at that. But um, just in case um, I'm wondering, does anybody have any question they want to ask? I could I'm mindful of our time as well. But again, it's 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 been oh no. Your story is so rich. It's so rich. It's so rich. And personally speaking, the being the best of you brand would definitely be supporting Orike Lewa. It's on record, it's, it's on record here. So at least hold me to account to it, you know. De definitely, definitely, definitely. Does anybody here have any questions? Please feel free to type it in the chat box. The challenges, but um, I will I will ask you a question because I know while you were sharing things, you know, I was gonna ask you um a question. And so in all this, right? Um, because from your journey of starting from um trying out your hands in different business ventures, do you ever have this fear? that one day Oreke Lewa will fail? For this one, no. Amazing. Never. It doesn't ever cross my mind 
But have I been scared? Yes, I have. Because there was a particular season, I think even twice. I have one of my distributors here, you know, and there were times that people would, people would order for products and we did not have. And you don't have? We did not have. And we did not have. And it did not last for only one week or one month. It lasted for like three months. And so what we were doing at that time was to send customers to distributors who, who had stock. Then the supermarkets could order for maybe like five cartons and we could only give them two cartons or we would give them only one carton because coconuts were scarce and they were very ups- or very expensive. You know, yes. So those times, yes, I was scared. Not because I thought I w- it wasn't going to, it was going to end, the business was going to end, but I was just wondering. How, but then I think that, I don't know, maybe at some point in my life, maybe I had told God that I was not going to borrow. Maybe I've declared some things that I will never borrow. I don't know, because every time we make an attempt to go to the bank, the bank says no. So I am almost compelled. In fact, it's not almost. I am always compelled to rely solely on God. Like total dependence. Like, so because see, I, I can be very, very, I can be very, very, not only responsible, I can be very, I'm, I'm, I think I, can, I am good with being to, to multitask. I can handle challenges on my own. I, I am very decisive. You know, even my husband would know that it's my strong point. If he travels today, he doesn't need to bother that anything is going to happen now because I can take full charge of everything. I don't need, I, I'm not the one to usually ask for help. But since I started this business, I see myself constantly being, being the one who's asking for help. Like maybe God is doing, maybe I have pride issues. <laughs> so, like, I will cut your wings. I'm going to break them, you know. So I find myself, you know, almost like from investment to, you know. So there are times where, for instance, maybe I need like 1.5 million to buy coconuts, and I don't even have 200,000 in the account, business account. We don't even have up to that, and. It's going to, it, 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 um, I need to make that payment. Today is Monday, right? And I need to make that payment, say, by Thursday. Jeffrey, by Wednesday night at 12.45 a.m., I will get an alert from the supermarket who was owning us. I would pay in the morning of Thursday. That's <laughs> how it's been my life. That's how it's been. So I'm almost always, I'm always, always sure that God will show up. So when people see me leading prayers and, they are, and I'm talking about the experience that I have, they don't understand sometimes because this is something I have lived. Like, I might not know how it will come, but then there was a season in my life also where I almost got to a place of being too confident, like God will handle it. And I'm not even doing anything about it. And I had to wait extra for that mm. in that situation. But as soon as I knew how God was dealing with me, like, oh, what do you need now? Is this okay? But at the time I would get need it, I would have it. Wow. I have one very interesting question for you. You know, we live in a day and age where um you hear about the feminist movement. Um, 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 I mean, even in Nigeria, you hear WIMBY's, you know, women empowerment. And I think the spirit behind that movement, so to speak, is because women have been marginalized so much by the men and society such that they have failed to um, be presented with a platform where they can express 
their innermost giftings or, or, or the things that they want to do. So my question would simply be this. What role has your husband played in your journey so far? Bearing in mind that some people's husbands could be either um, the wind beneath their, say, their, their flight or they could be the anchor such that it, it doesn't even give them a chance to even rise or to lift up their head, you know? So my, my, my husband is a great, has been a great support, you know, for me personally. Um, it does not, it doesn't disturb me as it were, you know. Um, sometimes I feel that I am even overdoing it, you know, and so I am, um, I try, but I've, I've been able to also balance things out, Good. you know. So I have days in the week, I have a day in the week that I don't do, I don't go to work. In fact, sometimes I do twice two days in a week and I don't go out. So it's only with him or if I know he's not going to be at work because he also owns his own law firm. So he has time to himself and all of that. Um, but he's intentional about me growing is what I would say. You know, there are times where I will say her husband is my kind of man. You know, um, the network is acting funny at the moment. But again, guys, please keep your questions coming. <laughs> but he's, he's been a great support. He's awesome. been a great support. Awesome. Yeah. He's been a um, someone has a question here. It says, how have you been able to seek, secure your trade secret? Are you worried that at some point your staff can sell your trade secrets? Never have been worried. See, I always tell some people, I tell people generally, you can't do things alone. You can't. So you can't have, except because when you try to do things alone, you will just be limiting yourself, you know, and you can only, you can, you, you can only grow to the extent that you, to where you exist. True. And so that also is what is helping Orekelewa in terms of distribution. So one of the things that I learned from that last multinational, in fact, it wasn't that I learned, God was giving me that strategy to implement in that multinational. And I was able to see it work out. And then I implemented it on Orekelewa. It was having the distributorship scheme. So in that particular multinational, we, we they had so many customer base and customers, you know. But then they, their customers were always owing them, you, and they had such so many. And that's why my 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 um, professionalism was even required yeah, to so to be able to to control credit that was being given. But people were owing them money. They, it was so much. You know, and I said, no, we can't continue like this. What would work for us is to have micro or major distributors across the country. Now, these major distributors can now supply the micro distributors. And either way, those ones will not owe the other one, and then they will not owe us because we have to get cash from the major distributors immediately. Yeah. You know? so that the organization can have cash flow because cash is king. Absolutely. That was what we were able to run with Orekelewa. And so in Orekelewa today, we have distributors and our distributors are empowered such that if you are in Oyo State, for instance, you can, you are empowered to place products in supermarkets in your state. So that's an expansion also. If I had done that by myself, it, I, I, I wouldn't have been able to go to that extent. We're in Borno State. Can I go to from Lagos to Borno now and go and put product in a, in a supermarket or in Abuja or in Kogi, in Ampa? Like I've never even, I did, in fact, when it was during this business that I started to check my geography and my, my teacher, my geography teacher would, 
will be proud of me now because <laughs> I know <don't> people. <laughs> Ogumosho, you know, different places. Like I've never even been to myself, you know. But if you were, you know, hiding things and keeping them to yourself, it is that they can only try. But there's, there are different things that make up a product. It's not only the ingredients. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, you should start it's getting ready. Right. If you start getting ready to write your book, if you start getting ready to write your book, honestly, because I mean, many people would be blessed by your story. I mean, I can't. Again, I think from the day we had this conversation about coming on here, I know perhaps you would have been wondering why is this guy always telling me thank you. I can't thank you enough. Uh, because I'm I'm grateful that your story would not just bless. And funny enough, right? The very first time we had this part to dream, um, we, were, we were more than this in number. But for me, I've come in my work with God, I've come to learn that don't let numbers deceive you. Rather, mm -hmm. let it be measured by impact. And funny enough, a large population of people here, I dare say that I'm the only man on this platform. I won't be surprised. Mm -hmm. I won't be surprised. But again, um, what what um, my comfort and my joy is that I know within me that there are people who, by listening to your stories, have been nursing things in their minds. And this is the last push God is giving them to just go out and birth what God has put in their hands. You know, so, I mean, I can't thank you enough. I mean, thank you, thank you, thank you. I know that I will, I, I will be inviting you sometime in the future, but it's in, it's in a different capacity altogether, but it has to do with business. But again, I'm, I just want to say thank you.